Good morning. 390? Yes. the temptation to say, tell me what the old, old story is. Amy. Oh, Jesus died on the cross for all of us. Beth. God loves us. God loves us. I've got one. He's the God who sees me. Hmm. And you. Yeah. All right, Zach, I'm calling on you, buddy. God is greater than anything, everything. Amen. Kim, I'm going to let you. Well, go ahead, Kim. <laughs> she loves being called on at work. She just all, raised her hand all the time. <laughs> yes, God is beyond words. Amen. All right, one more. Mm -hmm. Oh, God is the creator of all of our beautiful things we have. Thank you. I'll just, nah, I'll leave everybody else alone. <laughs> Dog on. Yeah, okay, that'll cost you. 346. 346. i 
estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. seen to it that we would understand that you are in charge yes we go our way and we do we do what we do and you allow free will but you are working a plan a perfect plan and even with our free will Lord God you are getting us to a place of perfection and beauty and newness and eternity we can only picture it, picture it, Lord, and, and, and imagine only because of the descriptions that you have given and others have shared who have drawn near to you and yet stayed with us. Thank you, Lord. It is well, it is well with my soul, with our souls, that you, Lord God, are the God of love, the God of peace, and the God of eternity. Thank you for that. Amen. Itching to sing another? Sure. 554. 554. Five, Can't imagine what. <laughs> Let the heavens ring, God reigns and the earth be glad. 
earth is very glad these days, very glad. Mm -mm -mm, there is hope. There is hope. Hope for us, hope for the future. Hope that I would just get to the scriptures here. Jeremiah 23, 1 through 6. Oh, there's good scriptures today. I tell you what. Not that any of them are bad, but boy, there's good scriptures today. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Scatter them just, oh, you're on your own. Ah, I don't care about you. That kind of scattering. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, the people put in charge to shepherd the people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. I will bring them back to their fold and they shall be fruitful and multiply. He's talking about then and now. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they will not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall they any of them be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. King David was promised that he would always have a successor on the throne. Jesus came from David's lineage. Jesus is who's being foretold here. I will raise up David, for David, a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land, as Jesus has done. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Now, Follow me here. Jesus came to become our righteous covering. Jesus came and he went to the cross. And when he died our death, spiritual death, he put a covering over us. Thus, our right standing with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit could impart, plant the seed of righteousness in you and me and all who would Receive him. The ambassador of heaven planted the seed of righteousness in you and then nurtured, tended that so that he echoed God's love to us. Even before we were born again, he echoed God's love to us by giving us moms, dads, others who would love us and nurture us and show us the ways of righteousness start teaching us that revealing God's truth taking some to heaven before they could could bloom here that's where our babies are he sheltered and nourished that righteous seed in us that Jesus allowed in our covering he sheltered and nourished that righteous seed unto our spiritual rebirth, our born-again realization of God whose hand created, imagined, and planted, and tended you and me. The God who sees me. Jeremiah. 1 John 3, 7 says, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous. The seed has sprouted. And Matthew 5 and 48. Matthew says, Be teleosi, which is a new one to me. I'm, teleos is um, the word that, the, that they use for perfect in the, in the Bible. And that word generally means matured. Not perfect like God is perfect, but getting there. But matured. Okay? And this, be teleosi is complete. Be ye therefore complete, just as your heavenly Father is complete. Perfection will come when we go to be with him. Be ye complete. Complete in what? Complete in righteousness. A 
the prayer of Lloyd Ogilvie, which is from his book I've read to you before, from the, he quotes the fourth beatitude, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And then he prays, dear father, thank you for the gift of grace given through your son, Jesus Christ. I commit today to be a day of righteous living. My dominant desire today above all else will be to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness in my decisions, ethics, and morality. I will hunger and thirst for righteousness today. Lord, fill me with a consuming passion to be in a right relationship with you and reconciled with others. Not only do I desire your righteousness as my passion, but also with other people and their needs. Any person who does not know your love and any area of injustice in society will become a part of your agenda for me. In this quiet moment, I pray for a sense of your assurance for receiving the gift of a hunger and thirst for your righteousness. I affirm that I want to do right because I am righteous through your love and forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for making each day a fresh opportunity to hunger and thirst for righteousness. The psalm today is Psalm 23. Could we read it all together instead of in part you and me? And just read it all together. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd. I, I shall not, not be in want. want. The, the Lord, Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. waters. You restore you my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your, your name's sake. sake. Though, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil and my, my cup, cup is running, running over. over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. David celebrates God's care for him by reflecting upon the many ways that he cares for his own sheep. Do you get that? David is reflecting on the way that God treats him as he's thinking about the way that he treats his own sheep. Actually a lovely metaphor for us, but it's more. We likewise must become a reflection of God's care and heart set toward us. God is love. Love your, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said love a lot of times. Love one another. And God is truth. God alone is truth. As we find the truth, study the truth, and hear the truth, and live the truth. God is patient. He's been patient with us. And he urges us to be patient and kind with others. God is generous, always been generous to us, hasn't he? And we're to be just as generous with others. We reduplicate. He reduplicates himself in us in that way. God is forgiving. He said that we can't come be with him if, he want, if we don't forgive just as we have been forgiven. And God is holy. And we are to live holy just as he is holy. He is confident. God is confident. And he wants us to be confident in our, our salvation and the fact that he has claimed us. I've told you last week, showed us off to all the heavens. This one's mine. Can't touch this. And God is faithful. We know that. And we dare not forget it. And we also have to be faithful to others and certainly to him. Ephesians 2, 11 through 22. He's talking to the people that have been coming to the Lord and uh, who are gen were Gentiles or are Gentiles and have received Jesus, but they've, they've been divided from the, from the Jews. The Jews have kept their distance from the Gentiles an awful lot back in that day. 
<clears throat> so they were sort of put away. And Paul says, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who were called the circumcision, the Jews, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that we might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross. If this is not the unifying message of the, of the Bible, he's telling those who are newcomers, hey, don't act like newcomers. Come on, you're in, you're in equal with these Jews who, you know, who just knew more than you for a while. That's all. Thus putting to death with hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him, both of us have access in one spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I think that must have fired them up. I think the, the Greeks among them were fixing to go back and say, hey, I got to tell you something here, you know, and start preaching the gospel, sharing the gospel as is our calling. Great scriptures. <clears throat> Now, Jesus, this is in the, in the aftermath of Jesus' disciples going out without two tunics and uh, without any money in their wallets and, and going into strange places and, and preaching Jesus. And, and uh, remember, if, if they deny you or, or tell you to kick rocks, just knock the dust off your shoes, off your sandals, and, and leave it there for them. Don't, don't carry the blame of their disbelief. So... Now they've come back, and they've got all kinds of stories to tell. <clears throat> we'll stand for the reading of this gospel. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Imagine their excitement. I can, and before they can get even past their excitement, seeing God move through their efforts, busyness finds them. Here we go. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. They were exhausted. And they went away in, in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now, many saw them going and, and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As they went ashore, they saw a great crowd, and Jesus had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things and give them hope. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. They came to that land and moored the boat. And when they got off the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about, <laughs> with, that, the whole, uh, about that the whole region and, and began bring the, the, bringing the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was and wherever he went into the villages of the cities and farms, they laid their sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they would, that he might touch them or that they might touch the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. Your word of Lord, Lord, your word, Lord God, so perfect and, and pure and encouraging for us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for this. Be glorified in what we say and do. Amen. Please be seated. There was no rest. 
If they found some rest in the course of all of that, I don't know what it would be. They had to row to get wherever they were. So they came back just, to, you know, fired up but exhausted and business found them. Sound familiar? Does busyness find you? Yeah. Just when you want to take a minute, busyness finds you. The God is, the could is, the should is, the have to, or what if? They're out there. They're out there. We have to learn to learn to say, I'll get to that when I can. And that's just something that we have to learn. If we don't learn that, we end up being a mess. And then we're no good to anybody. You know, trying to prove, you know, that we are some. Stop it. Slow down. And I, you know, a guy one time at a church service in Jamestown years ago, Sunday night church service, is that he was a professor at the college in Valley City, might still be, but he uh, reacted to something that the pastor was saying, and he said, every time you say yes to one thing, you have to say no to another. Every time you say yes to one thing, you have to say no to another. I had never heard that before, and I was a, I tried to do everything anybody asked, and, and uh, boy, did that ever land in a good spot for me. Hmm. Sometimes you have to just put something off. I'll get to that when I can get to that. And if people are a little bit disappointed, well, part of that's on them. You know, follow your conscience, but don't let the gotta, coulda, shoulda, have to, or oh my gosh, what if? Don't let that run your life. You can't let that run your life. I probably preaching to the choir here because you're smart people but there are people out there that aren't here so Lord we're grateful today to have time here with you and some fellowship afterwards here I know that you love us all Lord and you've showed it in so many ways and we're so glad to share that with others that you enable us to program this and get it online so that others can be blessed others some very far away and some close by. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We praise your name, and we thank you for this, for this country that is founded on your holiness but has certainly gone its way in some, for some years and in some ways. But we offer it back up to you, Lord God. We pray for this country, for goodness and greatness and holiness to resume and grow in this place. We thank you for these things, precious Jesus. Amen. Hello, everybody. Man, it's good to be here. I tell you what, nice to see everybody. Amy's here in spirit, in flesh, in the basement. Daniel update. Okay. Um, not much has changed as far as their transition back. They don't have a date for sure, but hopefully they shall all be at the rally point. What day is it today? 20? 20? 21. Hmm. Within a week. They should be at a rally point, which is like Kuwait, I think. Oh, within a week out of? Out of wherever they are. Okay. Because they're all over. Yeah. In this spot. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's time to get them back here. Yep. Good. All right. What's that? No. Uh -uh. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. And I was want to ask about the Austin update too. What's um, <coughs> oh, well, the other day, he was looking at and now he's got a big empty watch like Ishia or Oh. Part of it could be he just wanted to know if there was rest for the airlock. No, that would be Google, Emily, Google. Stress. It's like, what stress does he have? Yeah. 
No. <laughs> yeah, you're just, I mean, just on the border there with all the criminals. And you know, it's, you know. it's like I have all the rock grass and the other things have made Jurassic, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah you man. do. <laughs> <laughs> In his defense, it was only 10 o'clock where he yeah. was, so. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'll give you a... Funny. It's your <laughs> and it's your birthday. Yes, oh my heavens. Oh. Oh wonderful. Oh, nice. Wonderful. Where will you dine? Pardon? Where will you dine? Steakhouse, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Get their pulled, get their pulled pork. Oh my. Yeah. Well, get anything. They have. I have not been to a more efficient restaurant anywhere, and I worked in them. And I mean, they are good. Boom, boom, boom. They've got people walking through doing one thing and another. I tell you what, we got our waiter is a bank teller studying to be a bank manager and uh, he came showed up in time to take our order and uh, I mean it was just I can't say enough about it happy birthday and we're just thinking just on the cusp of 50 some yeah okay yeah, yeah. we're not looking for details <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Why wait any longer? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, my short friend. Happy birthday to you. No, we won't do that. Happy birthday. God bless you, dear. And many, 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 many more. What a nice surprise. What a nice surprise. I got a peekaboo friend here. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit all of this out because I got it because of my peekaboo friend. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Well, we're going to pray for our boys that are away, and uh, Clayton and Kim and Shirley and the rest of the wrestlers. They had a family reunion last week or so, or a little bit before, and they all got COVID. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. So um, Clayton's 
uh, staying at his mom's an, an awful lot, so that Shirley has someone with her. And I think they're they're on the on the mend now, but uh, they've not, they've not had a fun week. So we're thinking of them and and our boys that are far away. So let, let's just pray, Lord. We're so grateful for our our young men who uh, stepped up and and said, uh, um, "I will help this country stay its course." And they've both done just that, Lord, Daniel and Austin. And I thank you for their lives, for their families, for, for their courage to walk in the face of some, some real crazy stuff. So thank you, Lord, that you continue to shield them. I see your angels around them, a guardian angel that looks after them, Lord, and keeps them from, from the worst of events. And just get them home, Lord God, where they can be the daddy that they want to be and the husband that they want to be here and uh, be loved on by their moms. So I thank you for them, Lord God, and, and uh, that you would just be with uh, Clayton and Kim and Shirley and uh, the, or the rest of them who uh, I'm not sure who all, but I think there are others as well, Lord God. Just guard them that this doesn't become a respiratory problem that that makes them even sicker, Lord God. Bring them up from that, and I thank you that uh, Clayton's spirits are, are high, and uh, he got to see his little baby uh, grandson yesterday and sent pictures of that, so we're glad for that. But we just love you, Lord, and we thank you for these things, for looking after us and, and for giving us this little church to, to look after and a place for a family, a church family to, to grow. And so we thank you for that, Lord. And again, Lord, we, we would pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I have one little um, announcement that I'm figuring on being in Ohio uh, next weekend. And um, Amy might or might not be coming along, depending on how she feels. But uh, we're just going to uh, close, close up for one Sunday. If, and uh, I think that's OK with everybody. I don't see any nays. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's okay to do that. And one, I, I, I hesitated to do that because, you know, we're a family and we've had a recent, a huge recent loss, and I don't want to not be together. And uh, so uh, there was that to consider. But um, a work day. Yeah, and I, so scrap that. If, if people if if people see that there's something that could get done and they want to come and do it, come and do it. But yeah, it's one Sunday, I think it was Zach, Mark, and I. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty often it's just Zach and Kim or Amy, and uh, so that's the way that goes. But yeah, I did mention that, but we thought about it and. That'd be good. The only one I don't have, I think, is um, Pam coming by. Yeah, Pammy, I'll tell her. I heard from her yesterday. She's she's doing fine. She had two. She was taking her cats to uh, uh, Minnesota, and uh, she had. They were going kind of wild in the car, and she. So before they started out, she said, "Now we're not going to have this because I'm not going to be able to concentrate to drive." And they calmed down for the whole trip. <laughs> it's like. You're like Amy. She talks to the dog that way. <laughs> He's like, yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. The, the cat whisperer. So, and uh, Denise brought the, the chair and the table. Um, it's beautiful. Oh, man. I'm surprised nobody's... Go ahead. Somebody's sitting at you. No, I want the table. Oh, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Wait till you try the chair. Yeah. 
Well, I believe God wants us to live every moment with the understanding of how precious we are to him, humbled by the honest reality of our imperfection, such to seek him, his wisdom, his truth, his good favor, to please him above all else. And then as we attend to this humble pursuit, we would put each daily misstep in the rearview mirror and press on. Do better today to curb our sinful missteps than yesterday and press on. Because he has said, I will throw all of your sins in, into the sea of forgetfulness. That, so he has, he has the ability to forget them and, and he'd like for us to, to press on as well. Balance is the key to joy. So let us worship that balance. 390. Amen. Well, we'll take up an offering. we give thanks for this today and for your miracle of of youth for Vicky as she as we prayed for that and as you could see on on video here she just in a flash became young again thank you lord for these things precious jesus amen amen